Welcome back to BeYoungMinistry.blogspot.com to another blog. And welcome to those who access the podcast through the YouTube channel. Uh, Millie's trying to say hey to, Ella, to, Ella, to everyone. Uh, today we're in John chapter 8, verses 42 through 47, which reads, Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language, for he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet, because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? Whoever belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. And that's John chapter 8, verses 42 through 47. You'll remember that the Lord Jesus is involved in a discussion with these threatened religious leaders, and he's bringing this discussion to its dramatic climax. In verse 42, he re reiterates that he was sent to earth by God the Father. He follows this with three questions in the following verses. In verse 43, he asked them, why is my language not clear to you? In verse 46, he asked them, can any of you prove me guilty of sin? Then again, in verse 46, he asked them, if I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? In asking the first question, the Lord Jesus reveals his unseen kingdom. We never understand life until we accept the fact that there are unseen realities, both good and bad, governing and controlling human life. The Lord Jesus lived continually in the realization that the unseen influences are a reality in this world. And the so-called religious leaders were most influenced by the unseen influence of the devil himself. The second question, can any of you prove me guilty uh, of sin? This question opened the door for these religious leaders to do in the Lord Jesus in front of all of the people who are increasingly believing in him. Their silence was the loudest display of his divinity. He paused for an answer, but no one responded. Not one of the Pharisees, the religious leaders, were able to say, Oh yeah, I remember when you performed such and such sin. As a result, we must either believe he is who he says he is, or we must conclude he is out of his mind. And that's what the religious leaders concluded. He was out of his mind. Due to the fact that these religious leaders never answered him, the Lord Jesus asked the third question. In verse 46, he asked them, If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? Then he answered the question in verse 47, which give indication that they didn't answer. They just stood there. And he said back to them, the reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. This is a concept that's always befuddled to me. Because from as early as I can remember in my life, I've been pursued by God, and I don't understand it totally. 
I know that I was conceived and born in sin. I know that I was dead in my sins and my trespasses. I know that if God had not sought me, I would have never believed in the first place. And yet I did have the responsibility to believe. These Jewish leaders with whom the Lord Jesus conversing, that wasn't their experience. The Lord Jesus in our text today teaches there are only two spiritual fathers. One is God and the other is the devil. One is true and holy, the other is a liar and a murderer. All have, who have ever lived have had one of these two fathers. Some, both. <laughs> I, had, I had as my father the devil until I began to believe in the Lord Jesus. The question is, how is one's father determined? In verse 42, the Lord Jesus provides us with a timeless test of truth. If God is our Father, then we will love the Son of God. After all, he was sent by God the Father to, to earth as the Messiah. If the Lord Jesus, as the Son of God, has God's approval, then to reject that which God approves of is to reject God himself. According to verse 43, the Lord Jesus reminds us that our inability to hear his word prevents us from claiming his father as our father. These Jews could hear the Lord Jesus with their ears, but hearing and understanding with their hearts are not the same. The Jews had a spiritual problem. Being so wrapped up in their preconceived ideas about the Messiah, they were blinded to him as he stood in front of them and spoke directly to them. In verse 44, the Lord Jesus reminds us that the devil is the father of murder and lies. These unbelieving Jewish leaders did not desire the things of God, and they knew it. They knew they desired lying because they were, they were trumping up charges against the Lord Jesus, and they wanted him dead. He was a threat to them. They desired the things of Satan, namely murder and lies. And in verse 47, the Lord Jesus gives the conclusion to the matter. It is those who enter a relationship with the Father through his Son who are enabled to hear and heed the words of God. My friend, are you, are you feeling that tug in your heart to believe for the first time? Now, I know many of you already believe, and that's great. But I'm addressing those who have yet to say yes to a personal relationship with God through his son, the Lord Jesus. You see, those who say yes are the ones who are the children of God. The result is spending our eternity in heaven with our Father. For those who do not believe in the Lord Jesus, they will spend their eternity in hell with their father, the devil. Now, there are three Greek words used in the New Testament for the word hell. In verse 47, the Lord Jesus uses the Greek word Gehenna, which is a reference to the Hebrew Valley of Hinnom on the south side of Jerusalem. In Old Testament days, it was used for human sacrifices to pagan gods, but it was later used as a garbage dump where fires continually burned. <laughs> It became a live illustration of divine retribution. Jesus used it to illustrate the other side of eternity, outside of heaven. Gehenna is a picture or everlasting torment. Though hell was created for the devil and his angels, those who reject Christ will also spend their eternity there because of their own rebellion against God. A careful study of the words of the Lord Jesus in the first Gospels, in the four Gospels, pardon me, renders an understanding that the Lord Jesus taught about hell more than any other subject, more than heaven, more than love, more than believe. He spoke about hell 
That's instructive. We can't turn a blind eye to this. 13% of his teachings refer to eternal judgment and hell. Two-thirds of his parables relate to resurrection and judgment. Much perishes in hell. Hope perishes. Happiness perishes. But the body and the soul of the unbeliever continues. Outside of heaven, outside of hope, and outside of God's goodness, hell is society at its worst. Hell surfaces and amplifies the ugliest traits in people. Cravings will go unchecked. Worriers will fret and never find peace. Thieves will steal and never have enough. Drunks will always crave more. Gluttons always demanding. None will be satisfied. The godless will remain ungodly. No one needs to spend their eternity in such a place because God sent his son, the Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, to take on sin and death on our behalf. I trust, my friend, that you have entered into a personal relationship with God through his son. You've experienced the free gift of God through the death of his son on that cross. And a personal relationship with God the Father. You see, this is what this is what it's about. A personal relationship with God. Not our performance. Actually, it's his performance. It's the fruit of the Spirit. It's not the fruit of Bobby or anybody else. My friends, I trust this podcast is useful to you in your walk with the Lord. If I can be of any further assistance to you, shoot me an email at beyoungministry at gmail.com. Hey, 